silver values, right? Silver rounds, silver eagles, world silver, then the big half dollars, then the quarters, and then the coin that was the workhorse of them all, the dime, whether it was a Barber, a Mercury, or a Roosevelt. But we spend a lot of time grinding through the numbers. If this is 50 cents more or this is 50 cents less, where does it stack? What's the weight relationship and all the fun stuff that help us make a collection or a collecting topic? Well, tonight, the price on these for how many different we have available is crazy. Look at it. We're talking about the last silver, 90% silver dime in circulation, which is the four-term president, FDR, Roosevelt, right? He passes away in late 1945. Quickly, Congress moves forward to create a new coin in circulation because of his involvement with the March of Dimes, and I'll get into that a little bit later. They chose the dime as his denomination. And now, it's still out there today. But these are the silver issues. 90% silver on the dime stopped in 1964. So these were issued in silver from 1945 through 1964, a very short period of time. They were struck at the San Francisco Mint, they were struck at the Philadelphia Mint, they were struck at the Denver Mint. It was the workhorse. These are beautiful unks, but that last line of the graphic is what it's all about. Right? 25 different are available in this grouping we bought. We bring in a lot of silver, and these were unk bags. So I just take a handful, look at them. Where are they? Are they concentrating on the latter years, which is more common? You're going to see 61, 62, 63, 64s, etc. Is there a break of Philadelphia and Denver's? Do you see any estimates? Well, the handfuls I kept on pulling were like, no, there's a lot of coins in the 50s here. Lots of coins in the 1950s. So then the thing was this. Take one of the bags, sort them out. And they did. And they came up with 25 different coins which means you're getting S's. It means you're going to be getting P's. It means you're going to be getting D's. But just in your head, do the math backwards. 1964, a P and a D. There was no S. Go backwards, 25 coins. If that's exactly what it was, and by the way, it's not, that means you're way into the early 1950s. What a great opportunity for $3.99 each. Again, we're not afraid of price points. Do you want to buy one? Thank you. Do you want to buy 100? You're more than welcome, but the 100 will be 25 different times 4. We're not going to give you 25 different and then the other 75, a duplicate of one of the earlier ones. Yes, we got rid of some coins. That's not the way we do things here. We want you coming back over and over and over again, wanting these great values. But the workhorse was the dime. Right? And it makes sense. The smaller the denomination, the more frequently used in commerce. We have fewer half dollars in our pocket, fewer quarters, more dimes, more nickels, more cents, right? Just kind of the thing. But in silver, 1964, the last year of 90% silvers, they did not continue making silver dimes like they did the Kennedy half dollar through 1970. Clad dimes started in 65. So it's been over half a century, basically, since we've seen 90% silvers out there. The competition for coins dated in the 1960s. So 60, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So the last five years of issue, the P's and the D's, that would be 10 total coins in all, right? Their lowest price was 16.25. Their highest price was 17 per coin. You get all those 10. You're at $160 and change. If you buy all those 10 with us, it's $3.99 times 10, under 40. We're one-fourth the price. But that's what the deal comes into. Look at the silver weights on dimes versus quarters versus half dollars. Uncirculated condition. In circulated condition, they're tighter. A lot of bullion-ish like coin calculations. But in uncirculated condition, that's when the hat comes off. 
and you got to do some scratching on the head, right? Franklin's, uncirculated Franklin's. We have the lowest price in the country. Franklin's, which is a half dollar, right? Competition's at 40, $45 a coin for most of theirs. Even the 63 is 39.95, right? So that's a half dollar, five dimes. Five dimes here is what? 20 bucks. Quarters, 19.95 to 25 dollars a coin right now. Washington quarters and unk across the board. Some even higher. Well, that's a two dimes, two and a half dimes. So let's say three dimes. Three dimes, 3.99 times three puts you at 12 dollars versus 20 dollars. So when it comes to the sure silver in Unk right now, the Roosevelt's are kicking some butt. It's a great place to be. Phones are very busy right now. AVCcoins.com, everybody. Use it all night long as you wish. Put things into your shopping cart. It will let you know when something's close to a sellout. So that way you don't miss out. You don't have order processing issues later, and you got to talk to Hunter and the crew to solve it. But our operators are here. They're ready to go. I got two or three free right now. No, I don't. No, I, it's been bouncing around a lot tonight, and I thank you for that. But the reason why is because we're talking about affordable, collectible coins. What other network do you know has a coin on the air for $3.99? We know value isn't always meaning it's expensive. And rarity doesn't always mean it's expensive. There are some bargains out there that are affordable. And tonight, again, with up to 25 different, do the math backwards. The 1960s are only 10 coins. That means if those are all in this group, probably are, the other 15 are all from the 50s. And they're $3.99 each, where our competition's $16 to $17 a coin. Their 10 coins is $1.60, our 10 coins is $39.90. Phones are very busy. Guys, we need a 30-second clock. Lots of fun. Told you it was going to be a great evening. We got stuff all over the place tonight. Value, value, value. It's our middle name. From $3.99 to multi-thousand dollar rarities, the bottom line is this. There's something for everybody. Always will be. And I love this because when it comes to pure silver, somebody say, should I be buying rounds right now or silver eagles? Well, the premium's down on silver eagles, so... If you like legal tender versus rounds, a good thought. But I said, here's an idea, right? The uncirculated vintage coins, where are they right now? The 90 percenters, before one ounce rounds were introduced by Engelhardt in 1982, the average consumer only stored silver as what? 90 percent. 1980 hits, destroys almost all of it. Phones are very busy. This is a fun one. We have to be moving on. 